Hey friends, tonight we are hanging out at Disney's Boardwalk Resort and we are going to be dining at the Flying Fish. This restaurant reopened today and it's on the list of restaurants I've never eaten at before. So I'm going to be able to bring you guys along with me as we experience something brand new and fun at Walt Disney World and I'm so excited. Anywho, let's go do this. After we dine at Flying Fish tonight, I'm one step closer away from being able to say that I've dined at every single restaurant at Walt Disney World. There's only like two or three restaurants left that hasn't reopened and uh, I'm like super excited. Like this is so much fun and being able to bring you guys and show you all the amazing dining experience is such an honor. The Boardwalk Resort has so many amazing eateries that you can actually choose from and them opening up Flying Fish is like I think the last one because Jelly Rolls is open, uh, Big Rivers, the brewery is open, uh, they also have uh, Trotteria Alferno but you know what they didn't open up ESPN yet so they're still waiting on ESPN and then the Boardwalk is 100% open again. I love coming out to the boardwalk right at that time of the day where it's still like light outside and all the lights are turning on because it's so pretty. The boardwalk at night is one of the best places to come to and I just love it. Look at this. So majestic, right? We're going to head right down to the boardwalk so we can get checked in for our reservation. Usually whenever a restaurant reopens the first day, reservations go like that. So I was lucky enough that I grabbed one and if I don't show up on time, they might actually disappear and I might not get one. I always like walking past this sign right here to the boardwalk show place of the shore and you can actually go down to the boardwalk without having to actually go inside so I usually step down this way. This restaurant is really well known for their seafood and a lot of my friends have told me that this is their favorite place like this is their favorite restaurant on Disney property so my anticipation my like uh, excitement is really really high and I'm not too sure what I'm gonna get I don't like a lot of seafood so I might get a little land a little sea mix it up a little bit try something good. <laughs> And here it is, the flying fish. I think it's the first time they actually turned on the lights too. Because I've been down here plenty of times before. And uh, while the restaurant was closed, I don't think they had those neon lights on. And they're just so amazing. Like it is so awesome. I love coming to hang out at the boardwalk. There's so many cool things to do. Here's Abracadab Bar. And we're in a little bit of a cold snap in Florida. It's like 40 to 50 degree weather. So they have the fires on to keep everybody warm. And at the Abracadab Bar, they actually have heat elements in there. So that's really nifty. But I guess we're gonna head on in now. Hi friends! <laughs> Here is a look at the menu before we head in. They've got some nice lobster bisque as an appetizer. They also have a slow roasted pork belly, shrimp cocktail, and then for the entrees, they have salmon, they have a filet, they have some scallops, a red snapper, organic chicken, char-crusted New York strip. A char-crusted New York strip sounds amazing. I wonder if they have kind of a uh, land and sea combination oh yeah the enhancements down here so you can enhance everything with some lobster octopus scallops or shrimp so i might do that that sounds really really good but we'll look at the menu a little bit more when we get in there we are all checked in and let me give you guys a little look at the restaurant itself before we go to our table as soon as you walk in you can go straight into the dining room or to the left they actually have Abracadabra bar and it kind of shares uh, the lobby here. This is one of my favorite places to come get a drink. It's a magician's themed bar and I love it. Look at all of this in here. Also check out the floors. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things. Here is a look at the restaurant. It is so nice in here. Very, very nice. They have a bar area there. So if I wasn't able to get a reservation, I probably could have just came and sat at the bar. And uh, this is my first time being in here. Like I said, I've never eaten here before. And it, it's kind of exciting. Oh, those are fish up there. Oh, now that's fancy. Now we have made it to our table and I like how they have an open kitchen so you can actually look in there and see the masters at work and uh, yeah we're gonna dive in. Uh, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna get to eat yet. I'm gonna look at the menu again but I like how they have this little washing thing here so you can wash your hands and I think you take this little towelette and you put it inside the stone oh, and an expand. Oh wow look at it. Holy moly I've never seen that before. Look at this. It's going all the way up. Oh wow. That is so, so cool. So you get to clean your hands right here at the table. Get your hands nice and cleaned and ready to eat. Perfect, and then they give you a little bowl that you can just keep it in right there. Very fancy. Looks like for starters, they have a bread service and it looks like it's a potato bread. This looks so, so good. And also they churn their own butter here. 
one of the only restaurants on Disney property that actually churns their own butter. And it kind of reminds me, whenever I think of churning butter, I think of uh, uh, a colonial woman churning butter on the uh, wing of a plane. Like, you know that scene from that movie? Cracks me up every time. We're gonna try the bread first, and I'm excited. I like this style of bread. It's really, really good. And of course, we're gonna try the special butter. So we're gonna take a little butter there, a little bit of bread, it works. I'm not too sure if I mentioned this or not, but the silverware looks like fish. You see that? I want these for my house. Like, that is so fancy. I feel like uh, I should put it in the purse, you know? Put it in the purse, put it in the purse. Earlier we were looking at uh, all the different uh, appetizers and I've seen the pork belly on there and it looks so so good. So I think I'm going to have the pork belly as an appetizer and then go with the charred New York strip with lobster tail. So a little uh, land and sea combination and I think it's going to be good. Here is the pork belly and wow that is a big piece of pork belly that they give you right there. And it's also cooked in a wine sauce and this looks so so good. Like. Wow, they cure it for three days. It's a three day cure on there, and I'm excited to dive in. So we're gonna cut right on into it. I'm gonna take a little spot right here. Oh wow, that literally just fell apart so, so easily. Holy moly. This looks so good. I can't wait to try it, so here we go. Wow. I really was not expecting to find the best pork belly I think I've ever had at the Flying Fish, but I think I did. Like, ew. Oh, this is perfection on a plate. So, so good. The cherry gastric that comes served with the pork belly seriously makes that dish or makes this appetizer so, so good. And I really do love this. Like, like I said, I wasn't expecting to get the best pork belly here at the Flying Fish, but I think they did it. They did it good. I love the fact that we're sitting right underneath the flying fish. Like, it is so pretty in here. It is a really, really nice restaurant. I'm also super excited to try the charred New York strip. And they have a really impressive broiler set up back there with the wood. I think I'm going to show you a little bit because I'm impressed. It looks really cool. And that's one of the coolest things about having an open kitchen is you get to see how they prepare your food. Look at that setup right there. That's a good setup. <laughs> wow. I can feel it. <laughs> this is going to be so, so good. The chefs are literally having such a great time back there cooking. And like I said, they're like the masters of the craft back there. So you're watching the masters at work. And all of like all of the actual like cast members here are in such great spirits. They're happy to be back at their home restaurant. Everyone's saying welcome back. So it really is amazing to see all the restaurants reopen again. And they're doing a fantastic job. When I first came in, they sat me over near the kitchen and uh, the lighting there kind of messed up with the camera, like it was adding lines to it. And I told them about it and they just moved me over here. Uh, and I was like, well, that's really nice. Like a lot of places probably wouldn't take the time, but they were like, oh no, let's put you at a different table. So I appreciate that. And also I appreciate the way the bar looks. You see the ceiling is all different bottles right there. Like, that is mind-blowing. I've never seen anything like that, and it's so pretty. I want to come in here and have drinks, just sit at the bar. And uh, I asked before, and you can actually order the full menu from the bar. So if you don't have a reservation, they have plenty of walk-ups here that you can come sit at the bar and order. After we get done with dinner here, we can hang out at the boardwalk and even maybe walk over to Epcot to see Harmonious because it's literally like a, a five minute walk from here, so it's not too bad at all. And also, I wanted to show you guys a really cool snippet at the end of the video. Today, uh, I got to ride Orlando's newest roller coaster, Icebreaker, and it was a media event and it was so much fun. So, I have some really cool footage that I'm going to throw in at the end of the video so you guys can see it because it was such a fun time. And here it is, the main event. I am so excited. This looks so, so good. I've never had one of these potatoes before. This is like the 16 layer potato. Uh, and then they uh, flash fry it real quick. I've seen so many pictures of them before. We got multicolor cauliflower. We've got the New York strip. Look at that char on there uh, with the Bernese sauce on there and the lobster. Like this is the perfect land and sea combination. I can't wait to dive into it. 
I always have the hardest time saying Barney's sauce. I say Barney's, Barney's, Burmese, like Python. Like, I don't know why, it's just sometimes when I, I like visualize it, I go to say it, and then it comes out Burmese. Burmese. Here we go, we're gonna cut into the steak. I'm gonna take a little end piece right here because I wanna try it on its own first before we get with the uh, Bernays sauce on there. Oh wow, that char is fantastic. You guys know how I love my steak. So like this is gonna be, this, this might rank really high. This actually might be a high ranking steak here. You guys know I love my Pittsburgh steak, so this actually might rank in my top five. I don't know, we're gonna find out. We're gonna bite into it first. Just a steak, nothing else. Here we go. boy oh boy guys it's good now we're gonna try some of the sauce right here look at that oh <laughs> I'm gonna have to try it with the Bernays sauce before I talk about that steak being just plain on its own because it was phenomenal but we gotta try it with the sauce so here we go the evolution is just continuing guys <laughs> This is absolutely amazing. Wow. Such a great steak. This is gonna rank in the top five. I guarantee it already, I already know. I think we're gonna have to finish it all and I'm gonna have to find a good spot for it and really think this over. Cause you know, I take my steak business pretty serious. So this right here is a top five steak though. The crazy thing is, is we haven't even touched the lobster or the potatoes so like there is so much more amazing things to come but i keep on picking at the steak i keep on going for it i keep on cutting up pieces all right we're going in on the lobster here cooked perfectly oh that is the way lobster going in here and i don't even know they don't give me any extra butter with it but from the way it looks i don't know if you're gonna eat it i don't think you're gonna eat it we're gonna find out maybe oh Oh my lord, I didn't even think of this. Put a little Bernese sauce on there because it's kind of, Bernese sauce kind of like a hollandaise sauce, so a lot of butter in there already. So this, <laughs> That is the way, folks. That's how you eat the lobster here. <laughs> now we're gonna try this, we gotta try the potatoes here because this looks so, so good. I can smell this potato from here. Like, <laughs> look at this, oh boy. Oh, there's like even a crunch sound effect to it. I, I don't even know how I should cut it. Maybe I should just cut it like this, right down. Oh boy. Can you guys see the 16 layers of potato in there? 16 layers all going in here. <laughs> the potato steak combination is really, really setting this meal off right now. <laughs> I, I kind of walked in here like with a big uh, like hype, you know what I mean? I know a lot of people said this is such a great restaurant, but I'm a believer now. I am a believer, because <laughs> this is so, so good. Right here, I have a little bit of the steak, the sauce, the potatoes, and the lobster, all in one bite. I don't know if you can get any better than this, but we're going for it here. And there, is the verdict. I wish I kept some of my bread. I would have definitely scooped up all that sauce right there. Absolutely amazing. We're gonna talk about it more once we get outside, but wow. Here is a look at the dessert menu. They've got a cocoa breach, which is a vanilla custard with a kind of chocolate pearl crunch in there. Kind of an upside down volcano cake. Uh, they also have a 50th celebration, which is fresh berries, crispy meringue and then sweet lemon but i think i'm gonna go with the classic might go with the cocoa breach because i feel like that's a signature item all right all yours man that is perfection <laughs> wow i cannot wait to dive into this that's the way oh oh wow 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this was exactly the way they described it, like an upside down volcano cake. And wow, I'm gonna just cut right down the center there. <laughs> Holy moly. I have uh, definitely come to realize flying fish does not play around. <laughs> this is gonna be so amazing. This is so, so good. Let's grab a little bit of this right here. And then a little bit more over here. Oh. <laughs> this is good stuff right here. I can't finish it. I am too full. I'm throwing in the towel. And there we have it. That was flying fish. It was so, so good. I was not expecting to have such an amazing steak experience and the pork belly experience. Like, I was thinking like, okay, flying fish, really good seafood restaurant, but that steak is my number three. That is at my number three spot. Now, if you guys have been keeping track of my top five, well, I'm just gonna give you my top three right now. My top three is flying fish at number three. Like, that took, that took the third spot. Second is going to be Amare with their newest steak. That was phenomenal. And then, of course, number one, Shula's. And I tell you, I'm not a big filet guy. I like ribeyes. And for a strip to actually pop up on the top three, that's impressive. That's what I mean. It's the char. The char was phenomenal. It was so, so good. And the lobster, the whole meal, the combination was just amazing. So, <laughs> Now, I think we're gonna go hang out around the boardwalk a little bit. Uh, don't forget, I was telling you, uh, I went and did uh, the newest Orlando roller coaster. So I'll put that at the end of the video so you guys can watch it if you want to. And uh, yeah, just kinda hang out here at the boardwalk for a bit. Once Epcot closes, usually the boardwalk gets a little bit busy. Now it's only like 6.30, 7 o'clock. And I can't believe it's dark out already. Oh wait, no, it's 7 o'clock, so it is dark out already. Look at that. Oh, I kind of like how you can see a little light reflecting off of Yacht Club there. It looks kind of like something from a sci-fi movie, doesn't it? Wow, it's kind of, it's really awesome. And uh, they have some performers here too. So I think we'll come like, uh, take a look at the performers by the screen door. <laughs> You feel better? I probably should have held it. Probably should have held it. Don't make eye contact with me. I have a terrible stage for that. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> hey! Yeah, you should see it from here. We're going to go faster. Hey, let's hear it from the Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to see something dangerous? Hey. And before we do this trick, let's applaud our balcony section. Hey! hey. hey. Yeah. Those are the high price tickets up there. They are, yeah. All right. Slow three five? Yes. Here we go. I love that they have entertainment on the boardwalk and they'll have a big variety of different things. Like they'll have the jugglers there, they have magicians, they have uh, performances, and it's just a fun atmosphere. It's the boardwalk, you know what I mean? Along with like live entertainment on the boardwalk, they also have some carnival or boardwalk style games. And one of these is my favorite. It's where you gotta smack the lobster into the pot. So it's kind of funny that we're coming from the flying fish. I wonder if I should give it a go. Five lobsters for five dollars and you put it here and you smack it down and you try to get the lobster in the pot. I went over and I bought some tokens. They're five dollars per token so uh, the minimum is ten dollars because you have to use your card. I don't have cash on me and I think we're gonna play the lobster game. I think we're gonna get ten lobsters. Oh we're gonna get twelve lobsters. Twelve lobsters for ten dollars. Here they come. All the lobsters right here. This and you flip the tail over the claws like that. Okay. All right. This is the way. Yep. We're gonna try. <laughs> Thank you. Look at all these lobsters I got. It's impressive. <laughs> all right. So this one right here. So you're gonna aim it. Oh boy. Oh, that was so close. Yeah. So you gotta go. Whoa, there we go. That's one. 
All right, we're gonna try this again. I already got one in, so I'm going for the medium. Oh, there we go. Oh wait, I, well I got a whole lot of lobsters. Like, you guys want to play? You want some lobsters? I got tons of lobsters here. I know. I'm like, holy moly. I can't. I've never done good. I'm like, hey. Oh wait, we missed that one already. So we're going in right here. Oh, so close. I think I broke it. Oh no, it's sturdy, huh? <laughs> You get two already, right? Yeah. Oh, there it is. There's the third one. That's the large. That's it. Okay. Okay. Side on the wall. Great big anything hanging on. Oh. Robo sharks. I have the baby sharks. I have the great penguins. Get any of those. Yep. Wow. If you don't like those, you can do one medium, and you can do one small. Maybe this bucket right here. Oh, you can get three smalls. Oh. Did she win? You give her the give her the prize. Give her the prize. Yeah, give her the prize. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that I got three in. Like that is so crazy. And I didn't want the prize. There was a girl, like a little girl, that was playing on the other side. I don't think she made any in. So uh, I gave her uh, my prize. So she got to pick it. I think she got a, a big dolphin or a big penguin. It's really cool. I can't believe I got three. I just wanted to smash the lobsters. That's the only thing I wanted to do. Wow, take a look at this, guys. You can see the fireworks uh, from Magic Kingdom from here. That is so crazy, the way that the light is just kind of reflecting over there. Like, can you see it right here? That just, wow. That is really mind-blowing. It also looks like it's starting to rain, so that's not too good on a cold night. So I don't know how much longer we're gonna be able to hang out here at the boardwalk, but I do see another like little performance starting. So I think I might take a peek see and see what's going on over there. So Christian's gonna do 20 double unders. Oh. Now Christian, on your own time if you would please. There we go. A double under is when the rope goes underneath your feet twice before you come back to the ground. Maybe if you do crossfit or any exercising of that sort. You're familiar, but this rope is much heavier and much thicker. Has anybody been taking up? Oh, I guess she finished. Wow. Yeah, give her a hand. 20. Oh. Womp womp. Well, at least like crickets are supposed to be good luck, so I hope that'll be okay, you guys. Oh, Christian's favorite song. So I hope you guys get a little louder for her favorite song because it is pretty catchy. Here we go. Woo! Ooh, this is my favorite song. You guys got it. Oh, beautiful. It is only 58 degrees out and I feel like it's winter in Pennsylvania. I'm standing by the fire just like kind of hugging it. Look at this, I can get really close here. Like this feels so, so good. Oh. <laughs> Perfectly toasty, warming up my hands there. I can't believe it's only 59 degrees and I'm acting like this. I swear, I think I've lost all my Pennsylvania blood. And I guess with that, we're going to call it a night. I wanted to hang out at the boardwalk, but it is too chilly out. And it's starting to actually rain a little bit, so that's going to make it even worse. Uh, I did make a park reservation at Epcot, and I thought about walking over. So uh, I'm probably not going to do that, because like I said, it's too cold out. And I feel like we got a lot accomplished today. We did get to hang out at the boardwalk a little bit. We got to play the lobster game and see some live entertainment. Uh, the food was phenomenal, a flying fish. And also, don't forget, uh, I'm going to add in all of the fun... Uh, video clips that I have from riding uh, the uh, newest Orlando roller coaster ice icebreaker from SeaWorld right after this. So you guys will see that kind of as an ending. I got to ride with uh, my friend Sam and it was really fun. It was a good roller coaster and uh, I'm excited to go back and ride it again. We only got to ride it once today. It doesn't officially open until February 18th so it was like a little media event and I thought it would be cool to add it into the video. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.
now it is time so we're gonna have to empty out our pockets you can't bring anything on here no cell phones no nothing uh they're actually gonna supply the footage like they're gonna be recording us uh with special cameras that are attached to the coaster itself so i'm not gonna bring my camera on and uh yeah i'm excited i'm, I'm super excited and you don't want to bring that stuff on because I, I really think you can lose things here that's why the safety net over the walkway here because you don't want anyone walking by and then a cell phone plops out smacks you in the head i'm sure that's not going to be really comfortable Okay, we're moving. That was amazing. I really, really do like it. It is such a good roller coaster, and it's a lot more than you would expect from the outside. Like, you come out of your seat, and the second time you actually come down, it is so fun. Like, I really did it. The hype is up, and uh, like I said before, uh, like SeaWorld is like kind of like the roller coaster park here in Orlando, and this is a great addition. Like, this is a perfect fit here, and it still kind of holds on to that, like, best park to come for roller coasters. I mean, Universal and Disney they both have some really cool ones but I feel like this is the thrill park of like Central Florida it cans down bush gardens that's in Tampa that's a different story but uh, yeah it was really amazing now we're gonna start making our way back out and I just wanted to show you the new like impressive like skyline here because you have so many roller coasters here you can see them all from right here a little bit of everything icebreaker then they have uh, Mako then they have the Kraken and then of course Manta so like like I said before and they were all so pretty like a light blue a dark green uh, kind of a teal and now an orange so the color scheme is actually really nice and I like SeaWorld like this is so beautiful and did you know that the filming of Jaws was actually in here I think it was Jaws 3 they actually filmed right here at uh, Bayside Stadium a little fun fact for you all right, here it comes. So we're gonna be able to look at it from this backside. Oh, look at that. <laughs> All right. That is amazing, isn't it? And with that, I think we are done here. So fun to be able to come out and ride a roller coaster for the first time. And this is like, I think my first time ever being invited out to like an opening day attraction, uh, like, like, an, like an opening like media event attraction. I don't think anyone else has actually invited me out to kind of christen a new ride. Like 
Disney's never a universal so thank you SeaWorld I, I feel kind of honored to be able to come and show you guys and also to be able to enjoy it and it was a really great experience and uh, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video because I enjoyed making it so uh, we'll see you next time bye this is good old Florida traffic for you the I-4 doom we're heading straight for it and did you know SeaWorld has a hotel like a lot of people don't know that it's really interesting right I think it's called Renaissance but I'm not too sure if that's it right there but I like seeing the SeaWorld sign but how about that Disney World sign woo woo